morning, everybody. Glad to see you all out here today. Welcome, everybody that may be joining us from our Facebook live stream. Welcome, everybody that might be watching this later on our YouTube. If you like what you see, subscribe to our YouTube page. That would be a wonderful thing. God bless everybody here and all of those around the world that may hear this message today. This is a repeat message I did on maybe several years ago, and I tweaked it up a little bit. But it's a very important message, and it's a single word. Prepare. Prepare. Prepare means to make ready beforehand for some purpose, use, or activity. It also means to put uh, in a proper state of mind. So, the proper state of mind. On the mornings when I come to church, I start preparing my state of mind before I even get here. When we come to church, we come to prepare our hearts and our minds to praise and give honor and glory to God. Proper state of mind also applies as soon as we get up every day. When we get up every day, we can choose to have the right state of mind. Prepare the day by praying, reading scripture, and putting on that full armor of God. By doing this, we will have a different state of mind. A state of mind that will help prepare us for the battle of the day. And if we don't do this, we're going to enter that day with an improper state of mind. I'm the type of person who prepares for everything, right down to the smallest little detail. That's right. It's just me. For example, my ministry work. People don't realize how much time that Pastor Greg or Pastor Linda or the staff puts in to putting out a ministry, putting out what we do every week. Every Saturday morning I'm up there tweaking that PowerPoint. Linda's selecting the music. Without that preparation, we would have a worship service. People don't realize that. A lot of people go to events. We were just at the Trump rally this week. People don't realize the amount of preparation it takes to put on an event. It takes time. You have to prepare. I prepare in my personal activities. Always prepare for what you want to do. Because it's not going to turn out properly if you're not prepared for it properly. I prepare my business life. My things that I have to do. God has blessed me with a job. And I've got to prepare to do the best job in His honor and glory every day to make sure I'm doing it the right way. I prepare all my calendars. Notice I said all my calendars. I maintain a couple of calendars that are associated with activities and meetings and all the things that I need to attend to. If I didn't do that, I'd lose something. I would miss something. And then prior to any meeting or activity that I have to participate in, I re-prepare. Prior to my delivering a service, I prepare my mind. I sit in here early on and start to think about allowing the Holy Spirit to work through me to deliver the words. Let them be His words and not my words. So I prepare for every event. If I don't prepare adequately, then the outcome is usually not a desired result. It doesn't fulfill the expectation that you're looking for. If you don't prepare for it properly, what you were thinking you want as the result just isn't going to happen. And that happens in terms of preparing your heart for the Lord. Preparing for the judgment day. Because if you don't, Come that day, the desired result may not be what you're looking for. Now, during this time of the year, many of us are preparing for Christmas. 
We're planning parties and we plan the gifts that we need to buy. <laughs> However, there is more to Christmas than this. It is the preparation for his birth and the planning to remember his birth. To remember why he came. Linda and I started this week reading the Gospel of Luke leading up to the birth of Jesus. We're also planning this year to do something different. We're going to go to Bethlehem. And we decided to attend a Christmas Eve service up there. No, 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 it would come about if the planning doesn't happen early. I realized that I had to get online and get tickets. If I hadn't planned and looked at what was going on, I would have gone up there and not been able to get into the event. So it was very critical. You think about something you want to do, you have to plan for it. This is the time of year when love should be the focus. Amen. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Mm -hmm. You hear that at the Christmas season. That should be a slogan that we say every day. Amen. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. We should have that goodwill. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit from the Christmas holiday. And I'm going to shift to another area that requires preparation. And this is an area that there's fewer and fewer people preparing for, and that is the state of marriage. People, instead of planning for marriage, they just plan to live together a little bit. Mm -hmm. They want the escape clause. But you really need to have a successful marriage, to have a successful relationship. You really need to plan for that marriage. You need to plan to have Christ in the center of your marriage. Because if you don't plan that up front, the marriage isn't going to be all that great. The marriage is going to be about the newlywed couples today, they prepare, they get married to prepare and they spend all this money on the wedding. Okay, they plan for that new life together and they think that one big day is going to make everything change, but it don't. And then after that, they start out and they want to buy that house right away. Then they got to buy the furniture that they need. And don't forget, they got to have two flashy cars. Because <laughs> they're both working full-time jobs to try and pay for all of this. Because what they didn't prepare for, they didn't prepare the fact that they were slaves to the master. Master card, that is. <laughs> okay? Started out right in the world, right in debt. And they maybe not have planned all that debt. But they, they just started to drill themselves in. Now they're in a hole. They didn't plan for going in a hole, but they're in a hole. So they're in debt from the very beginning of the marriage. And if they would have done a better preparation from the start, they would have applied a rule of, of prudence in the management of their financial affairs. Something that I did not do. I'll admit it. And I paid the price later in my life. For not doing that. Amen. I have now learned how to prepare annually a budget and manage it and stick to it. Amen. Okay, because if you don't do that, you don't know where your money's going. I prepare for the necessities before the conveniences. Too many people just spend on the convenience, and then when they have to spend on the necessity, they go, I don't have money to do that. I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my mortgage. So I went out and had all the, the, the conveniences before. Uh -huh. And then they get themselves in trouble. So they're not preparing and planning what's going on. So as I've gotten older, and I guess when you get older, you get a little bit wiser. And you know, the Lord kicked me in the side of the head one day and said, wake up, what are you doing? I'm blessing you with the resources. Manage them properly. Exactly. Manage those resources properly. So I would suggest, and I've become content with what I've been blessed with, because I always wanted bigger and better. Uh -huh. I always wanted bigger, I always wanted that. I've learned how to be content with what I have been blessed with. And now I'm like, probably got too much. I need to be a little bit more humble. Uh -huh. Okay, so I've learned to be content with what I'd be blessed with, rather than go into debt for non-essential things. Because people think that i got to have this to make me happy. 
Really, how happy are you? You're happy the day you bought it, maybe two or three days you have to use it. You're not happy anymore. But if you prepare your heart every day to have the Lord and the, the Holy Spirit come in, you're going to be a happy person. You didn't have to buy a darn thing. Amen. Did none of, that's a free gift from God. Right. To come into your life. <laughs> There's also many other events in our lives that we prepare for. If you're going to school, mm -hmm. you're preparing for the class. If you didn't do that homework, you didn't do that study assignment, you're going to fall behind. If you want to get ahead and educate yourself, you're going to prepare and you're going to study. If you're going to change jobs, you prepare for that job interview. You rehearse your spiel, what you're going to be doing. You prepare for weddings. People prepare for sporting events. They prepare for parties and so on. But what they don't prepare for, they don't prepare to go to church every week. Mm. They don't work that into their schedule. I mean, we look at our, our group here. We've got a lot of people that do come, but then they come every week. Because they're not preparing themselves to really have a walk. Everybody says, I don't have time to do this, and I don't have time to do that. If you prepare, you uh, can plan the time to do anything that you want. Make a sacrifice. People don't want to do that today. They want the convenience, like I was talking about, buying that convenient thing. We're going to go into debt with God. We go into debt with God by not staying in tune with God. We've got to try and figure out how we're going to build ourselves out of debt, if we ever get to that point. So the big question today is, are we preparing our minds and heart to seek God? It's a question we should ask ourselves every day. Are you preparing your mind and heart today to seek God? In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13, it reads, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, there's a lot in 1 Peter. When I stumbled on 1 Peter for today's sermon, prepare your minds for action. Peter made some points here. Prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope. And do not conform to evil desires. Rather be holy. That's what I get out of that, that little verse right there. That's going to talk about preparing your minds for action again. Think about that for a moment. Prepare your mind for action. What does that mean, prepare your mind for action? I think that action is the choice that God gave to us. Uh -huh. Preparing your mind for action, you got to make a choice. I'm doing this or I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. You're preparing your mind to take that action. Uh -huh. So I think that action is that choice God gave to us. You choose to be guided by the Holy Spirit and to be obedient. That's a conscious act. You choose it every day. It just doesn't happen. That's your choice. You wake up every day from that sleep. Your mind is ready for action. What do you choose? And if you don't choose to be guided by the Holy Spirit, you are then in conflict of God's will for you. Amen. God has a will for you to be guided by the Holy Spirit that's why He gave us the Holy Spirit to be present with us each and every day. Uh -huh. So when we focus on His will, we will have a better chance to prepare our minds for holiness. Yeah. Holiness is kind of like being humble. We humble ourselves in kind of a way I think you're, 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 you're being a bit holy. It's a holiness. You're not boasting. Okay? You're being reserved. Mm -hmm. thinking about what God did when you center your thoughts when you center your thoughts on the return of Christ mm -hmm. and live accordingly you can escape many worldly things that influence your mind and hinder your spiritual growth 
all around us, no matter where you go, we have all of those things that will influence us and pull us away Amen. from the holiness that we're trying to achieve. Yes, mm -hmm. Pull us away from allowing the Spirit to guide our actions. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 57 and 14, and it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the way. Move every obstacle out of the way of my people. Similar applies here. This really applied back in the day for the people of Israel, clearing the way for the coming and the restoration of Israel. But prepare the way every day for your own mind. Prepare that way. And then in Proverbs, another good scripture, prepare your work outside and make it ready for yourself in the field. Afterwards, then, build your house. Mm -hmm. Talked about prepare your work. There are so many scriptures that have the word prepare in them. Yes, sir. Just think about today. How many things that you had to prepare for to just give you? Mm -hmm. Right? Think about just today. And for later today, how many things are you preparing for after you leave here? You know, I go out and I hand out million dollar bills. It doesn't just happen. I have to plan and prepare that I'm going to do that. I have to have them ready in my pocket. So I can hand them out. It's the way that God wants me to touch other people. So in my opinion, our greatest preparation should be to prepare to meet our Creator. That's our greatest preparation in life, every day. To do this, we should strive to live holy lives. 1 John 3, 1-3 talks about we must gather our thoughts and not let them stray from the truth in the Word. We must gather our thoughts. Because you know what? Satan's going to put a lot of impure thoughts in your head. He's going to put thoughts in your head for you to do things that are not in God's will. And that thought is going to turn into that action, and that action is going to turn into the wrong choice because Amen. you didn't let the Spirit allow you to choose Amen. the right way. Amen. All areas of our life should be in the process of becoming completely conformed to God's perfect and holy will. Amen. God has prepared a place for us we know that. It's biblical. He has prepared a place for us. And it's going to be one of two places. Based on our actions here. It's going to be one of two places. We can choose where we want to go. A lot of people like to move to the heat. They want to be warm. Right. Okay? So all of a sudden they're preparing to go the wrong way. Right. I want to prepare to be lifted up. I want to prepare to be with Him. I want to prepare to not worry about what anything in the future is going to be. I want to prepare every day that my mind is ready to live today as if it would be my last day. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. It may never come. You don't want to have any regrets. Especially when you're preparing to meet the Creator. So prepare every day your minds for action. That action is the right choice. Be obedient. Have self-control. Rather than being controlled by outside influences and worldly things. Allow yourself to be directed from within by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prepare every day for your continued walk of faith. Mm -hmm. Because the faithful walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. The forgiven ones will enjoy his peace. Mm -hmm. But the wicked will have no rest and no peace. Mm -hmm. They are doomed for punishment because they have refused to walk with the Lord. Open your heart to the Lord. Understand the word prepare as an invitation from him. He's allowing you to make the choice. He's allowing you to invite the Holy Spirit in. Yeah. 
Are you prepared to meet the Lord? Or better yet, one of my sermon topics is really the question is, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. But it is written that no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor heart of a man imagined, for what God has prepared for those who love Him. Mm. Amen. 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 Amen.